Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Star Wars Starship Versus the series, where I take two of your favorite Star Wars spaceships, put them head-to-head, -head, and try to see which one would come out on top. We're doing episodes of this series all week, every day, from now until Sunday. Expect a new Star Wars Starship Versus episode, so make sure you go down in the comments and tell me what matchup you'd like to see next. Before we get too far into today's episode, I just want to go over the poll results from yesterday, and the video's only been up for just over 12 hours, so the results are still pretty early. But we saw the Immobilizer 418 Cruiser go against the Rebellion's MC-30C Mon Calamari Frigate. I predicted that the Immobilizer would win, and so far with 75% of the vote, you guys are agreeing with me. But still plenty of time to vote, so go check out that video if you haven't already, and leave a vote in the annotation on the top right corner. Today's video is a battle of the ultimate Star Destroyers, with the Praetor Mark II class battlecruiser from Star Wars Legends going against the resurgent class battlecruiser from Star Wars Canon. The Praetor Mark II was a Star Destroyer used by the Galactic Empire during and after the Galactic Civil War. I say that this is a battle of the ultimate Star Destroyers because based on its size, it's just under the length needed to be a Super Star Destroyer, but still immensely powerful. The exact size of the Praetor II is unknown. The Age of Rebellion role-playing game says it's about the size of 5 Star Destroyers, which would put it at around 8 kilometers. Other sources have put it at around 4,800 meters. Regardless of its exact size, we know that it's very, very big. The Resurgent, on the other hand, was a 3 kilometer long Star Destroyer used by the First Order about 30 years after the Battle of Yavin. Although it's only 3 kilometers long, which really is only half the size of a Praetor II, it's exceptionally advanced and very, very powerful. So we're gonna battle these two ships head to head and see which one would come out on top. And in doing so, we're gonna evaluate them in three categories, offensive systems, defensive capabilities, and then fighter support. But we're not looking at the ship that wins more categories, we're looking at the one that wins overall. And we're also gonna be considering things like intangibles. Let's now look first at weaponry and we'll start with the Praetor II. Despite its exceptional size, the weapons of the Praetor II were not very impressive. Its main anti-capital ship guns were 60 quad heavy turbolaser batteries. Very powerful weapons, but not very numerous on this ship. It also had 70 other smaller turbolasers and ion cannons. And that's it. That's all the weapons it has. It has no anti-starfighter weapons, it has no additional anti-capital ship weapons, nothing else. I will say, the 60 quad heavy turbo lasers are very, very impressive. However, they still only give the ship about twice the amount of power as an Imperial II class Star Destroyer, a much smaller ship. I think this lack of weaponry must come from the age of the ship. It was really developed just after the Republic formed into the Empire. Also, they were not very practical and very popular ships, so perhaps they were just really never heavily upgraded. We also see in the Star Wars Marvel comics that perhaps they're used mostly to transport important people and things. The Resurgent, on the other hand, was very well armed and very technologically advanced, with over 1,500 turbo lasers and ion cannons, along with a dedicated point defense system. We don't know exactly the breakdown of the Resurgent's weapons. How many of those 1500 guns are turbo lasers, how powerful those turbo lasers are, and how many are ion cannons. But we do know that it's a ship designed for direct combat, unlike seemingly the Praetor II. The Resurgent's guns as a whole are also very advanced, and many use kyber crystals to even further upgrade their power. Although I'm not really convinced that that's standard practice, so I'm not going to count it here. Still, as always, I'm very impressed by the weaponry of this ship. So. I'm going to give this category to the First Order in their Resurgent class battlecruiser. Alright, so next we have defensive capabilities, and I think the first thing worth mentioning is that the name battlecruiser in both of these ships denotes a certain level of power. Typically in both Legends and Canon, battlecruisers are the most powerful ships available to a navy, except perhaps if they have a Star Dreadnought. So calling something a battlecruiser denotes a certain level of power and strength. The Praetor Mark II seems to be an exceptionally durable Star Destroyer. I have a copy of one of the old Marvel comics called Screams in the Void. Unfortunately, I can't find an online version so that I can show you guys the scenes, but in it, Luke Skywalker attacks a Praetor II with the weapon called the Ultra Power Blast. Throughout the battle, they're in, other ships are hit by the Ultra Power Blast and are easily destroyed. The Praetor II, on the other hand, takes a shot from Luke Skywalker with the weapon and keeps going, although, of course, it is injured. The ship very clearly has thick armor, I mean you can tell just by looking at the design of it. But when you look at it you might also notice something else. There's no extended exposed bridge like on most super and regular Star Destroyers. There's also no energy bulbs or any other vulnerabilities on the surface. 
that should help the ship when under fire, and that's probably one of the reasons why, at times, it seems like it's used as a transport ship. The Resurgent fixes half of the problems that plagued old Star Destroyers. It has a secondary bridge within the heart of the ship, which is helpful and means that if the bridge is destroyed, the ship doesn't fall out of commission. However, it still leaves its main shield generator exposed and on the outside of the ship. And more than just that, it's in kind of a difficult to defend place. This would be a pretty big worry if it was fighting starfighters. That's not necessarily the case here, but still, it's something worth mentioning. All in all though, I gotta give this category to the much larger, seemingly much more defended Praetor II class battlecruiser. Although the Resurgent is undoubtedly more technologically advanced, the Praetor II just seems bulkier and sturdier and I believe it also has more impressive defensive feats. All right, so finally we have carrying capacity, and I'm gonna keep this one pretty simple. The Praetor II carried 120 starfighters. These probably would have been standard TIE fighters, TIE interceptors, and TIE bombers. The Resurgent, on the other hand, had two wings of starfighters, one of the standard first order TIEs, and one of the space superiority fighters. We don't know exactly how many fighters are in a wing, but I would guess over 50, but under 125. Both of these ships probably carried similar amounts of starfighters, although first order TIEs, and especially TIE superiority fighters, are much more advanced than the Imperial models. So I'm gonna give this category to the first order. All right, so finally we have intangibles, and the only thing I really wanna mention here is the speed of the Resurgent class battlecruiser. The Resurgent has 11 engines, and when going in a straight line, can actually accelerate to the speed of a TIE fighter. Now, this doesn't really leave any room for maneuverability, but I can see how this would be useful in a battle. If the two ships are broadside, for example, the Resurgent could use a little speed and pull behind the other one. Even just generally though, and not when only going in a straight line, I'm going to guess that the Resurgent is much faster than the Praetor II. It's half the size of the Praetor II, has four extra engines, and is probably much more technologically advanced. With that being said, let's now look at the battle itself, and this is going to be an interesting one because we have what seems to be kind of a behemoth in the Praetor II, albeit an outdated one, going against the very new, very technologically advanced, but pretty small resurgent class battlecruiser. There are a few things that will give the First Order a leg up in this fight, and the first, of course, is its more plentiful and more advanced weapons. I think the resurgent will be able to more effectively attack the Praetor II while also attacking its starfighters and the Resurgent's combination of anti-starfighter technology and its more advanced TIE fighters should allow it to own the skies. Although I'm not sure how much damage even 150 TIE fighters will be able to do against the very bulky Praetor II. The Praetor II only has 60 main guns. The strategy in this case of the Resurgent is going to be to get in a spot where very few of the weapons can hit it. As with most Star Destroyers, when you look at the Praetor II, you can see that it's clearly designed to focus fire through the front of the ship. I think if the Resurgent uses its impressive speed, it should be able to get into a spot where only a few of the weapons can hit it. In the meantime, it will take fire from the Praetor Mark II, but I don't think that this fire will be deadly because again, it has so few weapons. And once the Resurgent gets to a vulnerable area in the ship, it should be able to pound it with fire and destroy it. I just think that the Resurgent is too technologically advanced, too well armed, and too efficient for a larger, kind of outdated battlecruiser like the Praetor II to take it down. And even the size advantage can't really save it here, nor can its durability or its strength. So I'm going to give this battle to the Resurgent class battlecruiser of the First Order, and I'm going to say that it wins 8 times out of 10. The only chance I'm giving the Praetor II is if it can somehow absorb all of the shots given to it by the Resurgent while slowly chipping away with its powerful but not very common turbo lasers. Praetor is an old Roman word, so I think it's fitting that this old, outdated, losing ship would bear that name. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Take a second right now to vote in the upper right hand corner and let me know who you think would win. Also make sure to let me know down in the comments which match you'd like to see next and don't forget if you see one that you like, give it a thumbs up and a supporting comment. If you want to get further involved in the community, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. I'll post links down in the description, but the Discord especially is a whole lot of fun, so please join. Also don't forget, we've got a week's worth of Star Wars Starship vs. content coming, so if you haven't subscribed, please do now. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys. As always, may the force be with you.